Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to our Mindset and Motivation Monday, where I can't wait to dive into the topic of open versus closed-minded mentalities. If you or anyone in your life is currently well, let's say leaning more towards one than the other. And also very specifically understanding that not every area of your life, you're open or closed minded. So we'll go through that today. There's big telltale signs of what to look for. And I would say even more importantly is understanding how this could be a big roadblock holding you back from achieving the goals that you have in one of those big five areas. So let's get right into it. I found this really, really interesting because I was having a conversation uh, with my oldest daughter. She just turned eight years old, and we were talking about basically schoolwork in general. She likes school, but also kind of doesn't like school all at the same time. She'd rather be doing a whole lot of other things, and I totally understand that, especially given uh, the environmental-based circumstances that we're in right now. So the thing was, she was talking about some of the things being difficult and how she was always trying to find, you know, shortcuts and things like that. And, and again, I said, there's nothing wrong with finding and developing systems to make things go faster, to basically figure out how to create a shortcut. I said, nothing wrong with that at all. But I want to make sure that you're not developing the mindset that you want to stay away from doing difficult things in life, from really overcoming obstacles that might stand in your way. And I just simply said to her, I said, listen, school is one thing, but everything in life is going to be about really becoming better, becoming a better version of yourself. And that's what I began to share with her. And and I can always tell when she's not necessarily agreeing yet, but she's listening because uh, (laughs) my daughter has, uh, I don't know if it's a gift of gab or what, but she she likes to talk to the same degree that I do. So it's pretty funny because uh, conversation go back and forth, back and forth. But I knew that she was open to it. She was listening. And that's really all that I'm looking for for myself when I'm understanding and trying to figure out new concepts is just keeping that open mind. So at this moment, she was keeping an open mind. It doesn't mean that she believed yet, but it was the start to a new mindset where not everything had to be looked at as let's find the easiest way out of the situation. Because I know so many of us do, right? It's like we're already busy. We already have so many things to do. So it's like you don't want to take on one more thing. And you also, you know, you do. You want the shortcut. There's no doubt about that. It's also why, though, so many people online are not getting well right? They're not uh, losing the weight that they want or keeping it off because again, they're looking for that shortcut. They're not developing the relationship that they want with their partner or family. Uh, They're not creating the career that they're looking for. Uh, They're not spiritual. They're not feeling that connectedness to others in the earth and the universe around them. So, you know, the thing is, it's it's because some of that does take a little bit of work and it does take a little bit of self-development. And that's not a bad thing because hopefully none of us are going anywhere anytime soon. And the fulfillment that you will get from really bunkering, what's the the right word to say that I would say, kind of just settling in, settling in for the journey, understanding that it's not going to be a 10, 20 year project. And actually, you're going to learn and grow within the next few days and weeks when you begin to change and switch this mindset. And then yes, more growth will happen over the next year, three years, five years, 10 years, but you don't have to wait. That's the nice thing is like for most of these things in terms of body transformation, your health, your your career, your relationships, your spirituality, they can start to change over the next 30 days. They really can. And again, will you be at your ultimate goal? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, probably not. But the truth is like, what's the ultimate goal? The ultimate goal for most of us, if we want happiness, if we want to live a life of passion, a life of purpose is growth. So yes, you'll achieve a lot of things, but then what, right? But then what? I was reading this great story the other day I will quote it for you eventually. I will give credit where credit's due. But it was this 95-year-old doctor. And they said their greatest regret in life was the past 30 years. 
And that didn't make any sense to me. I'm like, well, what's this person talking about? Well, they said they worked until 65 years old and then they retired. And after they retired, sure, they did a little traveling. They did a little bit of this. They did a little bit of that. But they were ultimately just kind of waiting, unfortunately, to just have life pass them by. And they said their biggest regret was understanding that we have to give life to our years. So whether you're thinking about retiring or you're not going to retire for some time or you may never retire, the goal is always growth. So what this doctor did at 95 years old is he, uh, he said to himself, I'm going to take up a language. I'm going to immerse myself in another culture. And that was their form of basically growth. And uh, pretty remarkably, this doctor lived until 103 years old. Uh, they mastered a new language. They got to travel more. And it was just a totally different mindset. And it's something that we have to understand is that we never arrive. There, yes, we achieve goals. There's no doubt about it. But but it's not about doing more. It's simply about living more. It's about enjoying more. And much of that comes from our daily activities. So one of the ways that we can greatly enhance our life is through keeping more of an open mindset. And I want to just share with you the very subtle differences between an open mindset and a closed mindset. And I hope that, again, none of us are going to be perfect. Well, maybe there are a few people out there. I'm, I will probably not fall into that category, uh, but I'm going to do my best. And I'm also going to call out and look at the areas where I'm a little bit more closed-minded because, sure, I might be open-minded in terms of, um, let's say, uh, relationships or career or, but let's say maybe not in terms of health. Maybe I say, okay, I already know it works. I don't need to keep my mind open. I don't need to uh, recommend any of the things. That's not a place where I want to get to. And that's why, you know, even though I do feel uh, that I have the gut healing protocols, the thyroid, the adrenal, the mood, the sleep, like whatever those things are, there's no doubt about it. I'm going to keep my mind open. I'm going to continue to read every day. I'm going to continue to research every day so that if new developments come about, I can always Always add that on. It doesn't have to be a complete replacement of my dogma, uh, but what it can be is it can be an add-on to what we already do, uh, to what we already know works. And that's the same for your life. You don't need to totally upend your life right now. You can simply look at how can I better enhance those big five areas of my life. So let's start to go through them right now. One of the biggest issues with a close-minded person. Now, this may be you, this may not be you. And remember, look at the different phases and different areas of your life is what I spoke about with my daughter. And, and again, this is just a child, just a kid. Like, But the thing is, she's eight years old. This is like the end of that state of the brain, which is much more receptive in learning that all the different types of programming that are going to stay with her for the rest of her life. Now, can she rewire those when she's older? Sure, absolutely, through a lot of repetition. There's no doubt about that. But let's make it a little bit easier now if we can. And then for us adults that have to work on a little bit of the rewiring, that's all right. But if you see someone constantly avoiding challenges or obstacles in their life, you know that is it is a dead giveaway for a closed-minded person. Now, are they closed-minded in their entire life? I really want to differentiate this. I would say no, because most people will say, oh yeah, well, they're a closed-minded person. No, they really might just be closed-minded in, let's say, let's, let's go with health right now. Um, because we have a lot of people come to us and let's say they have low thyroid, so they have poor circulation, they have thinning hair, thinning eyebrows, thinning eyelashes, uh, the cold hands, the cold feet, they're gaining weight easily, their body is kind of feeling puffy and a little bit more swollen, feel a little bit more sluggish, more brain fog, more grogginess, all of the typical things of low thyroid. By the way, I'll be teaching you how to correct these things very, very shortly in my health results accelerators. But the thing is this, this person they're, they've jaded, right? They've gone and seen a half a dozen, a dozen other practitioners. They've done and read the books. They've implemented all these different things and it hasn't worked for them. So they're closed minded maybe because of this. And I understand that. I mean, again, I was skeptical as well. I had gone through 10 years of seeing, I mean, what, a hundred different practitioners, conventional medicine specialists, as well as natural health practitioners and reading books and going through programs and 
you know, a lot of it was working, but I would continue to relapse. So it was never sticking. And then, of course, as I've shared with you before, it was only when I began to understand how to integrate the ancient healing modalities, not using them alone, but integrating the Ayurvedic-based medicine, the bioregulatory, the traditional Chinese medicine, herbalism, and combining that with the state-of-the-art functional medicine lab testing, that is when I finally got better. So it's like everything I was learning was correct. And that's why like if you've been dealing with thyroid issues, you could already know about a lot of the things that you need to do, but it isn't truly integrated, right? And that's why the person's not getting well, but I understand why they have a closed mind. So we just say to them, listen, we understand where you're coming from. We work with many people like you. Uh, Trust the process. Allow yourself to suspend disbelief and simply take this up as the next step in your healing-based process. So that is absolutely uh, one thing to look at is where are you avoiding challenges right now in your life? Because an an open-minded person embraces a new challenge. They embrace a new obstacle if it's going to lead to a desired result. Remember, an open-minded person doesn't want challenges in all of their life. That's not what an open-minded person is. They don't, you know, they're not, they're not into that uh, type of crazy lifestyle where things always have to be a constant challenge. No, it's not about that. It's about a challenge which will ultimately allow them to grow, become better, become a better person, more worthy of achieving the goal. That's a different story. All right. Next up is um, someone that gives up really easily. So a closed-minded person, at the first sign of an obstacle, at the first setback, meaning like, oh, I can't eat this food, I can't eat that food, um, or I didn't lose weight this week, I've been losing two pounds, three pounds a week, and then all of a sudden now I didn't lose anything this week. See, it doesn't work, right? We all know those types of people, and, and especially, I know there's a lot of practitioners listening on this, whether personal trainer, uh, acupuncturist, chiropractor, MD, ND, etc. But you know, keep in mind is that uh, your clients, again, like they've already seen this before. They've heard the story. They've read the story. Uh, now they're living it once again. So there's the frustration. But remember, you can't give up because if you give up, then you stop the learning process. Remember, if you do plateau in that weight loss for that one week, well, okay, let's look back. Did anything happen over this previous week? Any change in food? Any change in sleep? Any change in overall stress? Any change in uh, exercise, movement, right? Um, or maybe not. Maybe it was just, again, with many women that we work with, the last five, seven days of their cycle can cause them to gain a little bit of water weight, which then isn't necessarily fat uh, weight accumulation, adipose tissue uh, accumulation, but it's actually water retention. Now we're looking at potentially uh, an estrogen dominance based imbalance. And again, we can work on that. So remember, you can figure out the answer. You always can, but you can't give up. So, you know, an open-minded person just says, all right, well, this is now a a trigger that happens with me that I seem to do well, do well, do well, and then plateau. And then I oftentimes give up. And that's because I don't know where to go from there. And again, that's understandable. But now it's that next step of the growth-based process. There is another level to this. There's another level as a practitioner. There's another level as a client. And, um, and again, we're all participants in life, right? We're all humans being and we're all moving and kind of learning along this journey. But it also means that you've also undertaken something that you don't have all the answers to. But this is your reason and ability now to grow. It's, it's to work through the things that you don't have the answers to. And that's okay. It's okay not to have all the answers. It's kind of fun. It's kind of nice to be able to work the process. And yes, I know, especially with weight loss, you want your goal yesterday. Uh, but the truth is... If you are able to figure it out, you're able to keep the results. If you lost the weight and didn't really know why you lost the weight, then it's most likely not going to be yours to hold. Very, very important point to hold on to. All right. Another issue with closed-minded people is that they often ignore advice. They ignore feedback, whether it be from themselves and their actual anecdotal experience they're having in life, or from their coach, the expert, the book, like... This is what happens. People always say, um, well, you know, I'm different. That protocol might have worked for Sam and Lucy and Emily and everybody else, but I'm not Sam and Lucy and Emily. I'm, I'm you know, whoever I might be, and, and I'm just totally different, and my thyroid is different, my weight gain is different, my... Uh, career trajectory is different. My relationships are different. My spirituality is different, right? It's always, I'm different. I'm so unique that none of this is going to work for me. That me That held me back for many, many years. Remember, 
I am unique, and so are you. But there is a basic foundational protocol for everything and everyone that is foundational. We call them daily foundational protocols in terms of nutrition, foundational protocols for gut healing, foundational protocols for uh, for immune system, for uh, hormone rebalancing. Remember, like these are foundational. If you don't get enough vitamin C, you don't get enough vitamin D, you don't get enough zinc, your immune system is going to suffer. So it's like these are foundational. Now, could you also then use some elderberry and other things as well? Sure. Like no doubt about it. That may even work better for your body. But here's the thing. There's always a foundational protocol. We have to follow it, and then we can tweak it to make it ours. So, for example, let's say you're following our CBO protocol for gut healing. But on the sensitive gut guide, you um, see that you're able to eat, uh, let's just throw it out there, the oatmeal. And you say, well, I can't because grains really cause me inflammation. We'll say, Great. You don't have to eat oatmeal or any grains ever if you choose not to. That's okay. We just want to give you more choices. It doesn't mean the whole plan isn't going to work for you. It just means we're going to tweak it a little bit for you. And that's really what all these programs and things are about. So you don't want to give up at the first sign of a setback. And you also don't want to ignore useful feedback from yourself, meaning like, okay, let's say that um, every morning you're choosing to sleep in an extra half hour, but you know by doing that every day you're waking up a little bit more stressed because there's now no time to yourself. The kids waking up at the same time, everything's stressful. Go, go, go. You don't even get to shower in the morning, right? Well, you know, again, the, your own feedback is telling you if you woke up 30 minutes earlier, sure, it's a little less sleep, but that 30 minutes now causes you to have so much less stress. All right, the next one is this. So when we look at others that have already achieved what we want, we believe that there is then a scarcity or we are threatened by those other individuals. This is big. This is really, really um, prominent when I, when I coach a lot of our integrative health practitioners. So they might say, well, there's so many people already out there uh, as health coaches, or there's so many people already out there teaching about female hormones, like whatever it might be. And you feel that then there's this scarcity. And I went over this. Uh, actually, I taught this in one of our uh, IHP seminars in Australia. And I basically shared with people the state of the health industry and went through it step by step. And I said, listen, you might think that there's, you know, millions of people out there that are health coaches and, and you know, really working with all these people and, you know, they're successful. So there's no more clients left for you, whatever it might be. But I said, I went through the stats and there's like a little over 100,000 uh, certified health coaches out there. And you might say, well, that's an enormous number as well. Well, not really. When you look at the fact that there's about 8 billion people, 7 or 8 billion people on earth, all of those people more than ever, which is unfortunate, are developing more and more health issues due to uh, environmental toxicities and all sorts of issues going on in both mind and body that people need help. So, Sure, someone could be doing great and they have uh, 100,000 followers and they look like they have it all together. But the truth is they all started at zero. They all started at nothing. And they all started with picking up one book or one textbook or taking one certification or whatever it might be in order to take their own knowledge to the next level. And then they became passionate about it. Maybe it was healing themselves or a family member. And then they wanted to share that information with others and then eventually turn that into career. And that's really how it happened. So we can't look at other people, especially in the industry, as a threat. And we also can have the mindset of scarcity. There's so many people who need your help in any particular field, whether it be uh, real estate, accounting, or uh, whether it be a hairdresser or a barber or any, you know, any other profession out there. Everybody needs somebody and everybody connects with somebody a little bit differently. Meaning like I have my own way of presenting information. Some people gravitate towards it and others don't. And that's okay because I can't force the people that don't gravitate to my educational style uh, to want to listen, nor should they because it's not the right fit for them. So what I want to do is simply be able to teach and speak to the people who seem to relate to what I'm talking about. And however many people that is, that's 
okay. Like that's okay. And the same has to be for us as well. So I just want everyone to understand again, like in a person with a, what you feel like is a better relationship or better sense of spirituality or whatever it might be, they shouldn't be a threat to you. If anything, you might want to go deeper with them. You might want to actually ask them from a position of being humble to say, I'm really impressed with the relationship you have with your partner, with your spouse. And, you know, confidentially, I would love to know what it is that you do on a conscious level in order to be, in order to improve that on what seems like, you know, a daily or weekly basis. What is it that you do? Um, Do you have uh, specific routines that you go through? Do you have date nights? Like, what do you do to make your relationship so great? Come at that from a very humble position. And I'm telling you right now, the person might be taken aback in the beginning, especially if you've been friends with them for a while, whatever it might be. But in the end, they'll be like, whoa, that's, I appreciate you saying that. And I'm happy to share. And it might actually jog their memory, which will only further improve their own relationships. Like that's the thing. When we start to really think about what it is that we have, we give gratitude, we look at it with perspective, we get better as well. One of the reasons why I love doing the podcast is simply that I want to learn, that I want to grow. So every Monday I'm exploring a new topic for myself that I can try to improve in my own life. And again, this goes for health and this goes for spirituality. This goes for uh, anything that it might be as being a human. I mean, that's really what we're talking about on the Cabral concept, the health side to it. Um, but that also, we also need to f- not forget that our psychology, the way that we think, affects our physiology. So that's why I originally got into it and started studying uh, human and behavioral psychology so that I can better help people uh, understand that the emotional side, the stress side, and the success mindset side have so much to do with actual healing the physical body as well. So what I'm looking for is to help people, and I want you to be able to really help yourself to look at life as not one big challenge, not obstacles, and not people that you need to overcome or be better than. It's about saying, these are goals that I've set for myself. They mean a lot to me. I want to work towards them every single day, and no, I don't have to achieve them tomorrow in order to be happy. If we can start to look at life with more of an open-minded mindset or mentality, I I know for sure that we're going to be a whole lot healthier, a whole lot happier, and living a life of purpose and passion. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's show. I really appreciate your support. And of course, if this show was helpful, please do feel free to share it with anyone else you believe it could serve. Did you know that the body really only becomes sick or unbalanced in only two ways? Over time, you become deficient in vital nutrients, and you also accumulate toxins internally and from the environment. As those nutrients diminish and you increase your total toxic load, your body then begins to show the first signs of dis-ease. It's actually quite predictable, and the good news is that if we know how you began to fill up that proverbial rain barrel, we also know how to empty it to begin the healing process. I was fortunate enough to learn this ancient healing process from my mentor after suffering from debilitating diseases for close to a decade. It was only when I began to implement these techniques did I finally overcome my illnesses and go on to live a life of energy and vitality that I now enjoy. I'd like to share with you now what I discovered after traveling all over the world and how to combine the best of ancient healing wisdom with state-of-the-art science. Allow me to teach you exactly how I've been able to help over a quarter of a million people to empty their rain barrel and begin to transform their body and lives into what they've always hoped they could be. To get your copy of the international bestseller, The Rain Barrel Effect, simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash rain barrel.